How do you fit a stretching program in with your lifting when you don't have any time left to work out? If you're serious about lifting, then I'll bet you don't have much spare time up your sleeve. You're probably working out most days for more than an hour already. But you really want to get flexible because you've had enough of the aches and pains and you can feel your body getting stiffer the older you get. This is what we call the specialist curse. The better you are at something, the more you notice your imbalances. And with serious lifters, the most obvious imbalance is the lack of flexibility and the aches and pains that go along with it. But what if I told you there was a way you can include a comprehensive stretching program with your lifting and without working out more? Would you wanna know? Well, the first step is to uncover if you're a stage one, two, or three flexibility. And to do that, just grab the free flexibility blueprint. Click or tap the screen to get access. What's up everybody, my name is Rad Burmeister. I'm joined by my brother Yanni today. We are the co-founders of Unity Gym and the UMS. And today we're talking about the specialist curse and the specialist conundrum and what the difference is. We're gonna demystify it for you. And this is all inspired by a chat that I had by a new tribe member who the chat started with me on our Instagram uh, messages, our DMs, when he received the flexibility blueprint, which is our free download. If you haven't got that yet, it teaches you how you go from stage one, stage two, and stage three flexibility. Far, far more than a download, it's a full course. It is, it's, you're right, it's a full course. There's five videos with it, it's got a downloadable guide. It's honestly the most, incredible free content that we've ever created. And that's what this member said to me. He messaged me back, he just went, dude, with the mind blown emoji. And I asked him if he'd learned a lot. And he said, man, I've, I've been learning about flexibility and mobility for a long time and I've never seen anything explained in this way, is what he said. That led through to a conversation that eventually inspired him to join the UMS Tribe membership. And uh, once we were inside the UMS Tribe membership, I uh, got him to fill out our onboarding questionnaire and I created a custom program for him, which what he wanted was flexibility training to complement his strength training. So I created a customized flexibility program for him and uh, told him how to use it. And he started asking me more and more questions about uh, how it would go with his strength training until I eventually said to him, um, if you wanna get the most out of this, you might want to consider letting me create a UMS program for you, which is where we balance strength and flexibility in the same workout. And he really struggled to get his head around that because he had he'd never done that before. And this is what this is to lead into what the specialist conundrum is, because when you're a specialist and you've devoted all your time to this one thing and achieved a really good result with it, in this instance, it's I believe powerlifting and weightlifting, what this new member uh, was was very accomplished in. I had a look at their Instagram page and they were doing 220 kilo deadlifts for sets of eight with pretty good technique. And you know, you, you had this idea of that, that you want, when you learn, when you get some flexibility, you're gonna grab that flexibility and keep what you're doing and try to mash them together. Or if you're a yogi and you're really, really flexible, you wanna get some strength training and put it together with what you're doing. And of course you can do that but it requires a hell of a lot of time and a lot more thought because you have to think about how do I combine this with this? Whereas the UMS, the magic of the UMS is that that's all done for you. And the specialist conundrum is it's this letting go of what you thought was needed to get the results that you want and embracing something new, a better way to do it, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. And the... I, I, the, the, where this conversation started to lead was very funny. The timing always seems to work out uh, st strangely perfect uh, with with these sorts of discussions because I've just finished writing a piece for the newsletter next week that goes out to our inner circle, which is specifically on this the 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 specialist conundrum, the special the, the specialist curse we've spoken about a lot so far, which has to do with the downside to specializing in something. Um, and, and we always refer to a great example, and we pick on them a bit is uh, uh, crossfitters and powerlifters, but it can be any sport because any sport, you you know, Ido Portal said it best when he said, you, you can't um, uh, be an expert in something, you can't run towards something without running away from something else. And in the case of when you specialize in a specific sport, it's more so than ever because you you know the thing that you're specializing in 
means like that the dedication, the hours, the work, doing ten thousand uh, um, dedicated hours or whatever, uh, whatever the 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 new hype uh, buzz theory is uh, to become an expert in something. Uh, think of all the other things that you've sacrificed to get there. Uh, and for many people, um, uh, for this example we're talking about today, to get super strong, you've heavily neglected flexibility and mobility. And much to many people's detriment, and we don't tend to arrive at that realisation until we're in our middle ages, uh, where we start to focus more on longevity than short-term performance. Uh, most athletes peak in their early to mid 20s and by their late 20s to early 30s their careers are um, pretty much over uh, it's very rare that a professional athlete survives into their mid to late 30s uh, and it's only in extremely rare cases that professional athletes to survive uh, and, and continue a career into their 40s uh, like tom brady at the nfl player or some uh professional fighters like um uh maybe roy jones jr floyd mayweather these are names that come to mind that uh become so good at their their field of expertise that they're somewhat untouchable and that allows them to continue their their um uh career into into the later years but it's very very rare uh and you know the reason is because the sacrifices that you make along the way tend to add up uh, and, and, and um, bear a toll on your physical body. Uh, you know, the most obvious example of this is, uh, you know, a CrossFitter who, who achieves a, a very high level in their sport tend to have to make quite severe sacrifices um, for their physical body and their physical health because of the simple wear and tear that, you know, do, do, that style of training and how hard you have to train. Uh, you, you, you'll very, very rarely see a CrossFitter competing at the games, not completely wrapped in, uh, in physio tape and things like that. That's because there's a lot going on there that they need to manage. You know, by the time you reach that pinnacle, you've got the scars to show it. Um, and uh, that is, you know, generally the case in most sports. I, I played rugby league for a period of time. I also played soccer or football for a period of time. And I boxed for a, um, a decent amount of time. And, you know, one of the things that I notice now is that my hands from time to time just hurt. You know, it's almost like I've got some form of arthritis in my hands because uh, just from boxing for so long, you know, and that impact on your, uh, on, on your hands. I've got all sorts of injuries. I've had knee reconstruction for, from, from uh, football. Uh, you know, there's just, you just end up with um, issues that are really you know, somewhat unavoidable when you're trying to compete at that high level. And the reality is that the um, specialist curse is that you're, you're happy, you will happily make those sacrifices uh, for your performance. Problem is that you get to a point and what Rad and I have realized is that you get to that point in middle age where I'm sure a lot of our listeners can relate to this, where, you know, those, the, that toll starts to really, really feel uncomfortable on a day-to-day -day basis. You wake up, and you feel like you have to exercise just to get to baseline. I don't know if you can relate to this, Rad, but if if you don't exercise for a while, meaning like daily mobility, stretching, foam rolling, massage, or just some physical movement, uh, everything hurts. hundred <laughs> percent. But I think what's even more relevant, Yanni, is that you get to a point where being the best in your specialization is not as important as just not being the has-been that used to be mm. able to do it all. I know that that's what happened to me. And I know that that's, for me, it was Kung Fu, it was martial arts. And for my whole twenties, it was all about being the best. But then when I got out of the army after four years as an infantry soldier, the pain and aches in my body and the, the curse of specialization that had added up meant that it now wasn't so important for me to be the best it was just important for me to not get any worse with the pain and the symptoms that I was dealing with. And that's when you start to really, probably for the first time, recognize that you are dealing with the specialist curse. And that's when we get people that come into the UMS and they just go, oh my God, where, where did this come from? Because the UMS isn't designed to make you the best. Like you will get stronger if you specialize in powerlifting you absolutely will you'll get more flexible if you go and specialize in gymnastics style flexibility training or 
Um, you know, if you devote two hours a day to yoga, maybe. Um, I have seen some yogis that despite two hours a day or whatever of training, they still aren't that flexible or they can't it's, express their strength through end range. But the, the goal of the UMS is to make you strong, flexible and feel better than you did 10 years ago. And that happens so fast when you train that way. Like when we get specialists that come in, they talk about how after their first week or two of training, like they just feel completely different, you know. Well, the, the specialist curse is either, you know, how your body feels or the plateau in performance. Yeah. And I, I really think that it can be broken into those two things. You know, you're either beat up and you've got a lot of Im structural imbalances in the body that have led to injuries and uh, issues that cause a slowdown and even a plateau in performance uh, or um, progress. Or, or on the other hand, you may not feel like you're in enormous pain, but you're just not progressing anymore. And we've seen this. Uh, the most obvious example is um, uh, Ben, the yogi, who, you know, just wasn't strong enough for the type of progress in his practice that he wanted. And then when he came in and did UMS for a couple of months and he, he increased his strength in parallel with his flexibility. So he didn't lose any of the um, yoga flexibility he developed all of a sudden those movements that had uh been un um achievable in the past became achievable there's also examples of very strong people who you know were stifled by their lack of mobility and the 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 un unleashing their true uh, flexibility potential uh, there's been there uh enabled him to uh, enabled them to um uh press more, um, lift more weight. That was a, a, something I experienced, you know, because when I, when I was too tight in the hips and hamstrings, my squat was heavily compromised. And I got to a point where no matter how hard I tried, much above a, around 120 kilos would aggravate my lower back. I've had a lower back injury. And it wasn't until I increased my flexibility that I could really use the stretch shortening cycle in the deep squat and start to lift really heavy. Um, and uh, exponentially grow from that point. But m in, in most cases, uh, you know, we, we see um, as good, a re we, I'll, I'll take that back, I'll rephrase that. We see as good results from ex-professional elite level, like the highest level. We've had world champion Ironman, we've had, you know, some of the, um, the greatest rugby league and rugby union players in the world come through the program. And, you know, they're just trying to get back to baseline because of the sacrifices they've made in the pursuit of excellence in their, um, in their sport. And now they've, you know, they've got different priorities. They're, they're starting families. They're not trying to take on the world anymore. There's um, uh, uh, Craig Wing, who was, a, 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 you know, I knew him as a rugby league player, but in his later years played rugby union in Japan uh, before retiring. Um, you know, these are examples of people who get a really great result as well, just wanting to, I guess you could almost say, repair the damage that they've made sacrificing their bodies for their sport, you know, and that's what we call the, the specialist curse. Now, this is the segue I want to cross over into the specialist conundrum because this has become, an, this is an issue that we've seen with a lot of people. And one of the, the most difficult things about specializing in something is when you realize that you have to potentially sacrifice what you're doing to do something different to take you to the next level, whether it be to ease the, the pain and discomfort that you're experiencing from the plethora of injuries that your sport has given you over the years, or go to a new level in your performance in that sport. And uh, the conundrum is getting out of your own way because to, to specialize in something, you've got to love that thing. You've got to make it your life to get there, to get to that stage. Excuse me, I've got a, uh, an eyelash. And um, it's really difficult. You know, I know this firsthand. Rad knows this um, from firsthand experience in his martial arts training. Uh, for me, it was in my boxing. I really, really didn't want to do anything else. And when it came time to start doing a bit of weightlifting, I didn't enjoy it because that made it very difficult for me to perform at my best in boxing. I used to box every day for about three to four hours, usually about four hours. That's every day, seven days a week. On Sunday, it wasn't as much boxing. It was more like interval training, cardio sprints. We, we would do a lot of ocean drills, like in the cold water. Um, it was 
it was different style of training, but it was still three or four hours on, on a Sunday morning. You know, uh, the only difference was that it was usually in a park or on the beach rather than in the tra- in the gym. And then it came time where I had developed really bad posture. My shoulders were heavily rounded. This is in my early 20s. And I had developed really quite chronic um, structural balance uh, issues, you know, and I was starting to hurt myself. I, the, the most profound issue was that I um, really badly tore the long head of the tricep in right, my right arm. Uh, and then I, you know, I was young and silly and I got drunk on the dance floor and tried to do a, um, a break dancing move that I could do quite well. And I really badly uh, hurt my shoulder, caused a slap tear in my left shoulder. And basically the whole anterior portion of the cartilage labrum was ripped off the bone. And it was all really due to this really bad posture I had in my shoulders from boxing because, you know, my coach had sort of taught me that, you know, you want to really cage up and, you know, we, I don't know, you probably know the, the, the Boston um, uh, shell, which is, is, is really using your shoulder to deflect punches um, made popular by Floyd Mayweather. And, um, it's a defensive technique, but the downside is that you're always rounding your shoulders. And when you're doing that for three, four hours a day, it's very hard to do anything else. So when I realized that that was the cause of a lot of my injuries, I needed to start going to the gym and learning how to train for anatomical structural balance. I aligned myself with uh, a gentleman, the late Charles Poliquin first, and then uh, Dr. Tony Bataji, who was a disciple of Charles Poliquin originally. And you know, Charles had a great um, uh, answer to this problem of the uh, specialist conundrum. And we'll, we'll dive into, you know, what we, we experience on our level. But essentially what happens is when you get a specialist, they, they will fight tooth and nail for you to align what your, your prescription is to what they're already doing. Because they don't want to change what they're doing because they love what they're doing. What they're doing has, has enabled them to achieve extremely high levels of, of um, expertise in a, in a field of, you know, uh, sporting discipline that's, you know, really become part of their identity by this stage. It's who they are, you know, and to stop doing that and to, st- because you, you're going to have to, because what, you, you know, to get you to the next level is not doing more of what you've already done. It's, it's doing what you haven't done yet, you know, and what Charles used to do is he just had a flat rate of $10,000 US for a program. And he, the program would be 12 weeks. Uh, that's three mesocycle training blocks. And we asked him why at, at one point. He said, because when people put that much skin in the game, they shut up and do what they're told. Because if you've just paid $10,000 to get a, a result in a 12-week training block, you're not going to argue what you've, you're prescribed. You're just going to do it because you've invested such an enormous amount of money. Uh, and what we experience at Unity Gym, and you can probably share at your recent experience, Rad, is that because our program is so cost effective and affordable in comparison to that, uh, it, p- people really struggle because they're not investing an enormous amount of money. Um, you know, it makes it a little bit more difficult to, to, to sort of get through to people that, hey, listen, you know, we can try to mold our program to what you're already doing, the training split that you know, like and love. But chances are it's not going to get you a very good result. And, and we've seen it before. When people try to do that, I'm not going to name names, but we had a, a, a woman who, who came to us a while ago and wanted to do a press to handstand. And, you know, she just wouldn't really break out of all of the other things that she was already doing and just do what she was told to do with us. And then she blamed us later down the track that she didn't achieve the result she wanted and thought that our program wasn't any good. And I said, well, you didn't actually do the program. You did a a very watered down version of the program that suited your agenda. You know, I tried, I fought tooth and nail to get you to do our prescribed program, but you just wouldn't do it because it interrupted with your specialization uh, conundrum too much. Well, it, 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 it interrupts the ego too much because people, you know, when you're a specialist, you have spent, like I remember before I ever worked with a coach, for a prolonged period of time. I'm not talking about going to a workshop and learning from somebody. I'm not talking about buying one program off somebody and then seeing how you can take that and work it in. I'm talking about having someone write programs for you for several mesocycles. So every four weeks or six weeks, you're getting a new program that's based on the progress that you made from the last program. And you do that exactly 
as it's written with no variance. And before I'd done that, you whenever somebody tells you 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 go to somebody it's such a it, it the word conundrum is the best way to describe this because it is a conundrum that you go to somebody that knows more than you and they say oh that's easy if you want to achieve this do this and then you say no i'm not going to do that i'll just take a fraction of what you told me and i'll apply it to what i'm already doing and that'll be better than what you've told me to do because i i think that i know more than you do. And that is a real conundrum. And when I dug deeper into, you know, this member, um, this member's experience, at the end of the day, they'd really learned from so many different sources, a lot of them YouTube, um, and then paid a coach for X, Y, and Z. But it was all I'm taking this, 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 and I'm putting it together. It's a mishmash of it's, the content. It, it's a mishmash. That's right. And you know, when you work with a coach like Yanni and I, who have been doing this for almost two decades now professionally, it's a really, really different experience. You know, you're, you're working with people that, you, you know, like without big noting us, I'll, I'll do it in reverse. For me, when I've gone to work with coaches, when I've said, okay, I want to learn, for, for me, the big one was calisthenics. When I decided that I wanted to do calisthenics and that we were going to incorporate calisthenics into uh, the UMS, I wasn't going to go and learn calisthenics from YouTube videos. And I did that for a little while and I got to a point where I was like, okay, I've got an understanding of this and I wanna learn more. So I went and employed somebody. I worked with a guy named Roy Goldschmidt um, for two years where he wrote my programs for me. So because I wanted to learn from somebody that had achieved what I already wanna be able to do or that knew way more than me. And it was a it was a totally different way of training. Like it just it's it completely stripped away the, the the forget the program split that I was already doing. Forget the way that I was doing training. That was gone, and there was a new way of doing it. And I leveled up so much from it. I got so much out of it, and so does everybody else when they when they come in. You know, but this is the conundrum. This is what I want to try to drive home. The conundrum is that the ego of the specialist goes, eh, but I like what I'm already doing and I want to do this. And, you know, this this person, this member that I'm talking about now, they looked at their first phase of programming and they saw a supinated grip pull up. And they, they said to me, I actually can't do a supinated grip very well. Can I do a different grip of a pull up? And I said, of course you can. You can do a neutral grip pull up or you can do a pronated grip pull up and you'll never, ever get better at supinated grip. And the reason why you can't do a supinated grip, I would almost guarantee it's because it's a restriction in mobility and you came to us first to increase your mobility. So if you want to get better, you do the things that you're not good at. You don't do the things that you're already good at. That's how you get better. Yeah. If you keep playing into your strengths, your weaknesses, the, the disparity between your strengths and weaknesses just grows more and more and more and the imbalances that you came here to fix get worse and worse and worse. And fortunately that member has agreed and has said, we're going to give it a go. But the conundrum is, can you really follow through with it and are you going to give it a try? And in the very, very least, I'll, I'll bet everything that I own in this world that there is no specialist out there that wouldn't benefit from it, from at least doing the 12 week foundations program, which is three mesocycles of the UMS. When you go through that phase, when you learn how progressive overload and periodization applies to the conditioning exercises that most specialists have never done before things like wrist conditioning in all the different movements like flexion extension with elbow pronation and supination with wrist radial and ulnar deviation with inner and outer unit structural balance of the shoulder with by by doing things like bicep and tricep curls in a one-to-one -one ratio push and pull in the horizontal plane in a one-to-one ratio rotator cuff exercises in every workout scapular stabilization work like specialists come in and they talk about how they can do eight pull-ups but they've never been able to do one chest to bar pull up you know this all gets fixed when you do a structural balance program like the ums that you know balances strength and flexibility in the same workout and all of those things so you know that's the conundrum isn't it yeah the, con <laughs> the conundrum if you were to summarize is just being able to get will you be able to get out of your own way yep to to, to progress yeah. and because I, I, let, let me say this real quick as well yanni before you um go the it, what's really interesting is that if you're a specialist when you come to us i i've never met a specialist that comes to us that hasn't trained for at least three years it's often they've trained for five or ten years or even 15 years and so 
In the very least, if you just did three phases of the UMS and you 100% did it, when you look back on your training experience, it's such, a, it's such a blip. It's such a tiny amount of time where in the very least what you'll do is you will feel better. You'll unlock movement that, and pain-free movement that you haven't had before. And you'll learn new ways of programming that you'll be able to incorporate into what you do. But you won't get any of that if you look at the program, compare it to what you're doing and say, no, nah, I think I know better. You, 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 know, you, you won't get that level up. It just won't happen. Yeah, look, it's tough. It's, and the more of a, the more a specialist you are, the more dedication you put in, the more hours, uh, the harder it is to make this this transition. Because chances are you do uh, stand far above average. You know, you've achieved real noteworthy uh, results in your practice, and you know it's 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 hard to take advice when the cup is full already. You know, uh, it, it's hard to take on. The lessons of others when your cup when you feel like your cup is already overflowing and so you have to figure out a way of opening your mind uh you know not too much that your brain falls out but uh enough that you you know that, that you are in a in a in a place in a mindset that's capable of taking on new information because that's you know how you get to the next level Yep, 100%. Sorry, I had just uh, had myself muted then while I was searching for something, but couldn't find it. No, you uh, didn't. I could hear your... Uh, no, oh, you can, you, no, you can hear me, but the podcast <laughs> recording doesn't, so nobody can Doing hear me Doing technology. Typing. Yeah, nobody could, yeah. Hear me, nobody could hear me typing. Um, yeah, look, that's a... It's a, it's a great opportunity, you know, for... It's a great opportunity for... And if you've never done this, if you're... Uh, you know, because this is another thing that, that this member said to me. They said, I'm really struggling to get my head around the idea that this programming that you're giving me could be better than what I've been doing because I was paying $280 a month uh, for what I was doing before, which is almost 10 times as much as what we charge. And the reason why that is, is- You know, can I, can I just quickly say- Well, hang on, we, let me just finish we, what I was saying. The reason why that is, is because Yanni and I have spent the last 10 years systemizing what we do. And when you systemize things, you can deliver them at a, at a more cost-effective price. That's all it is. It's got nothing to do with what the value is or what you're getting out of it. People, people come into the UMS and they're blown away by the fact that it's me or Yanni or our coaches that are working with them directly. It's not just like, hey, here's a whole bunch of programs. Good luck. Enjoy it. It's not like that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, look, when Rad and I used to do um, – one-to-one -one coaching we used to charge just shy of two thousand dollars us a month for that and uh yeah like this was the reason why because we only wanted to have a very few select few clients and uh and that way we could you know we could focus heavily on that and we did that for many many years you know and we we trained some of the most successful people in the world in business and in in all sorts of different fields and uh, it was a lot of fun, but it wasn't scalable because we wanted to be able to help more people, essentially. You know, uh, we used to get people to commit to an entire year up front. So it was $24,000 US dollars a month, uh, sorry, uh, as an upfront payment. And um, yeah, now we've systemized what we do and we've made it easier to scale and, and train more people. And it's it's very effective. And uh, as a result, when you can train more people, guess what? The, the, the price, uh, the cost to each individual person comes right down. Now, we could probably charge a hell of a lot more than we charge. But our goal now is to democratize health and fitness advice and make it more available to the, the masses, you know, more people. Well, it's also, if you remember, one of the reasons why we, we do what we do is we've, we've been working with people for long enough to know that what we can achieve with people in three months is um, game changing. They'll feel incredible. But what we can achieve with people in 12 months is life changing, like literally life changing. People do 12 months with the UMS and they talk about how, like I see our alumni members, people that have been with us for more than 12 months. And when they comment on threads in Facebook, when people ask questions, they give better advice than most personal trainers that I know. And that's no joke. Yeah. They honestly do because they learn so much from it. And so the only way that we can get to that level with somebody is if the cost is something that people can manage long-term. 
it's not about what you know just a massive investment for you know eight weeks or 12 weeks and then that's it i can't afford to do this anymore um it's just not really how i like to work with people i rather really help to change people's lives so look if you haven't uh if you haven't grabbed it already and you want to learn more about this the flexibility blueprint is what teaches you how to identify whether you're stage one, stage two, or stage three flexibility. Stage one is when you are just starting out and this kind of a picture is probably gonna resonate with your best effort to try to touch your toes. It's when you're totally new to stretching. And what we need to do at stage one is just keep it totally simple and do uh, basically just a 20 minute full body mobility routine, something that makes you feel better instantly and that you can fit into your schedule without putting too much pressure on you. Stage two is for those people who are already comfortable stretching so they know how to do some stretches but they can't unlock these more advanced movements here and stage three is this specialist stage and this this illustration here is not an indication of what somebody at stage three looks like it's what we try to get people to look like because stage three is it encompasses a whole bunch of different people that Yanni and I have just spoken about. It's those people who are super flexible, but are, are quite weak and are feeling those imbalances. It's these super strong people who are really inflexible and are hearing these imbalances. Or it's even just those people who have been putting years and years and years into their workouts, into their training, but just haven't been able to create that structurally balanced body and just can't fit anything else on their plate anymore. And they just need to, so it's the mums. Uh, and dads who have been, you know, trying to maintain some kind of a fitness routine for since they've been a parent, but they just can't get it done. And they want to be able to, we want to, uh, you know, they need something that they can get done that covers strength, flexibility, fitness, uh, all in an efficient way. So if you want to know more about that, get the flexibility blueprint. It's free because it doesn't just talk to you about identifying these stages. It talks about what you need to do to level up in 28 days and get to that next level. Thanks so much for tuning in and listening to this episode, everybody. And if you did get value out of this, the Yanni and I put a hell of a lot of work into putting out really, really good free content. And the only ask that we have, if you're still listening to this podcast now, if you're still watching it on YouTube, please share it with your friends. And uh, just take a moment right now to click that little share button, copy the link, put it into an email, put it into a Facebook messenger, put it into a DM, however you like to communicate with people and share it to somebody that you think would benefit from this. It means the world to us and it's the only ask that we have for putting out all this free content. So please take a moment to do that right now. Hit that share button, forward it on and we'll see you in our next episode. Like, like and subscribe, do like all and the subscribe. cool stuff. Yeah, all, all that cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. See you in the next episode, everyone.